I hope you're ready for this video because I'm going to tell you a tip that I wish someone had told me to do when I was 18 because it would have saved me so much time. Finances is one of the things that is so key to life and knowing just a little bit about the basics is going to help you so much. One thing that you should really do, especially really when you're in your 20s because you can accumulate this money and save it over time, is to create an emergency fund. Ideally, an emergency fund should cover at least three to six months of living expenses. And I know that this is probably something that you're saying or thinking, well, I shouldn't have an emergency fund because like, I'm just living my life and all this money that's left over, I wanna use to have fun and to spend on myself and you know, whatever and fun nights out. But like, I get that. But also you never know what's gonna come up. You never know. This money could end up being an absolute lifesaver when you truly need it. You don't know what could come up. Like honestly, like an illness, your car just completely breaks down. You could just get thrown out by your landlord. You're told to leave. You could have a breakup and need to leave. Something just like really bad could happen that you haven't even thought about, which you don't want to think about, but could happen. You've got to kind of prepare for that in life because life is just about those ups and downs. And if you don't prepare for some of those downs, then it could be a very big down. <laughs> so how do you actually build this emergency fund? So. First, you want to sort out what's your target for savings. And then you want to sort out how much you're actually willingly able to put aside each month. Now, this is the absolute key thing. Like, you have to do this. You have to put it in an account that is easy for you to access. Do not get tempted by a fixed term interest rate because this money will be locked away for like a year and that's not easy for you to access if you really need it. That's the point that we can access it if there is an emergency to do so. I suggest having a look for a high yield saving account. So this means that you're putting it into an account where it kind of works with inflation. You won't actually be losing money by putting it into one of these accounts. The next thing that you should do is to learn to budget. A good rule of thumb with this is not to save what you have after spending, but to spend what you have after the saving. This is arguably a pretty hard stage of life to actually do budgeting and to save in this way because things are constantly changing in our 20s, you know, employment changes, where we're living changes, and especially right now, you know, the cost of living is crazy. So yeah, there's a lot of things to think about in terms of saving. So don't beat yourself up too much if some of your saving goals and your targets aren't always met as long as you're trying and you're getting there and you're actually practicing it at this point that's really good. I suggest using something to track what you're spending so something like a spreadsheet if you're good at excel or an actual physical book I have like a physical planner and I'll link it down below if it's still available because I found it to be really good but also if you can do it digitally like for example there's apps like Monzo so if you just kind of generally link everything to your Monzo then it will show you what is essential and also what you're spending that isn't so that if you're buying too many clothes makeup maybe things like you know going out for drinks and you're spending a bit too much in that area then you can see where it is that you need to cut down so the next thing is probably one of the biggest and best tips that i could possibly give you and this is to learn some kind of basic law and know some of your rights around money housing and renting. So I'm going to talk about my holy grail book again and that is Money, A User's Guide. One of you commented on the previous video that you really liked it and I just love that so much because it's such a good book. So basically what happened is that my landlord in third year tried to, I think, possibly scam me. Um, I mean realistically they should know about this thing but seems like maybe they didn't maybe they didn't but maybe they probably tried to scam me um so basically they told me that since i finished being a student during the summer and my rent basically ran through the summer that i owed council tax and the council tax came to about 400 pounds however after a while of 
me being panicked and me being stressed. I was actually reading Money, a user's guide, and I also did a little bit more of my own research, but I found out that where I was living was actually a HMO. And a HMO is housing under multiple occupancy, which means that you don't need to pay council tax. And this landlord really should have known that. Um, whether he here did or didn't, it doesn't really matter now because I didn't have to end up paying that because I told them, no, I don't need to pay council tax because it's a HMO and I never heard back from them again. Another story time which happened when I was a student, because of course all students are constantly screwed over, um, is during second year when our landlord decided to just not fix the fact that we had no hot water during the dead of winter. So we literally, honestly there were so many things wrong with that place, it was just awful. I'm not too sure if I've spoken about this actually in my university video, but if you want me to talk more about it, I certainly will because it was just, it was so bad. <laughs> we had like nowhere to wash our clothes really because like the dryer didn't work and it was like a dry and washer in one. We had no hot water for ages. The sink just broke and was just spilling out water everywhere. There was so many issues with this place. But basically, yeah, so we had no hot water um, and we had no heating as well. So yeah that was really bad when we were paying for it and the landlord needed to fix it so luckily i read this book and i knew who to contact who to go to um i didn't actually have to end up doing this in the end but because of reading this book i knew exactly who i can go to and talk to and how i should do it so therefore that's why i think that it's just so so key to understand a little bit more about your own rights and about the laws that are there to protect you when you are renting or a student or in a similar situation. Simply finding out a little bit of information like this and from digestible sources like online or from books is gonna help you so much. The next thing that you must do is to fix any debt that you have. So debt is a weird one. So it can actually help your credit score if you manage it well, but if not, it will put you into the actual depths of stress. <laughs> one key way to tackle your debts is to create somewhat of a plan. And I recommend doing the avalanche method. So that's looking at your loans, maybe credit card loans, which have the highest interest and dealing with those first. By putting your high interest debt first you will eliminate the ones that cost you the most each month. The next thing that you should really do is to open a pension. Obviously retirement seems so far away when you're in your 20s and I think a lot of us also have this idea of like you know I'm just gonna spend this money now because obviously it's so far away and you know this money is mine it's you know I already have a lot of money taken away from tax so why should I put more of it away when I'll never see it or I could you know not even get to retirement age and I think thinking this way it's you're prioritizing immediate gratification far too much when realistically you are going to need some sort of pension if you're just kind of working you know a regular job job and have you know a normal career you are going to want to retire one day everyone's going to want to retire one day and you're going to need money to do it look at what your employer offers you and if that's suitable for you then i suggest that you i think it's hr who you would speak to about this is that you you know you set it up and you can join multiple pension pots together. But yeah, I just recommend that you do this because it's one of those things that when you're older, you will thank yourself so much for doing it because you cannot live on a state pension. It's like impossible. You're going to need something else to also help you. And of course, having a separate pension, a private pension is going to allow you to do that and to have a comfortable retirement. Everyone wants that. No one wants to be, you know, on their own and unable to put their heating on you know when you're older that's a horrible thought and so yeah just doing the simple thing of putting away your money into a pension will help you so much in the future the last thing that you should do is stay at home if you can and i know that this is not suitable for everyone so 
don't come at me in the comments because I know that this isn't suitable for everyone. If you can do it, I suggest you do it. But if it is detrimental to your mental health, for example, not everyone has the same family dynamics. Not everyone is the same. A lot of the time it is better for you to not be at home. And if that is the case, then do it. Because even though you could be saving money at home, it's better for your mental health to not be there than don't be there. There's also the flip side of people thinking, well, you know, I'm 25, I'm 26, I'm 27, you know, even in your early 20s, you might not want to be at home, you know, you might have just come back from university, you don't want to be at home, but everyone is kind of doing this now because there's like no real choice because of how expensive it is to rent, buying a house is out the question for a lot of people, at least not for a long time in the future. And so there's no shame in staying at home with your parents. If you're able to and you want to and you can, then you should stay at home because you will save a lot of money. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that some of these financial tips will help you. This is just very much the basics and the beginner stages, you know, in your 20s. So that's kind of what I wanted to do here. Please let me know if you have any more tips or any resources that you'd like to put down in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!